Um, okay, so basically we can create packages, um, and packages are the heart of SSIS. Um, you need to create packages, which are basically just XML uh, stored, and you execute a package, and it's sort of like executing uh, that file, whatever's contained within that package. And as I was saying, I don't know if you heard, but you can right-click and you can create a new package. If you right-click on SSIS packages, and you can also delete packages. Okay, so a couple of things that we want to talk about here uh, is the control flow. The control flow um, organizes and executes the entire package. When you're designing your SSIS packages, the control flow is the starting point. Um, so there are three things uh, within a control flow, and they are uh, containers, and you also have um, the maintenance plan tasks, and then you also have a control flow execution task. So here, These are the containers, and we'll talk about them briefly, but we won't go too in-depth because uh, it's more involved with variables and things like that. And the items below, these are your maintenance plan tasks, and these are more DBA related. And then you also have some other tasks here that we'll talk about briefly, uh, like the FCP task, file system task, uh, script task and most importantly, the data flow task. Um, we also have uh, the data flow task. Uh, this is where all your ETL is handled. Um, it is probably the most used uh, transform. Uh, there's a lot that you can do within the data flow task. You can extract, uh, transform, and that's where you're going to be loading your data. Uh, right here, we have the event handlers. And basically, if you notice, all of the tools that you have in the control flow, you have in the event handlers. Um, and this is where you can set up uh, notifications, emails, and things like that if the package goes wrong. And then also we have uh, package, package Explorer, and then it just groups and shows everything uh, within this package that we're looking at. Okay, that being said. Um, you can see right here that we have uh, Solution Explorer. So let's say, for instance, your Solution Explorer was uh, not visible. Uh, there's a couple ways that you could uh, retrieve it. You can go View and click Solution Explorer. And you can also uh, click on this little button right here, and then your Solution Explorer will appear. Uh, this button right here is for the properties window, and it's the same thing. Uh, if your uh, properties window was gone, uh, you can hit F4, or you can also uh, hit this button, and then your properties window will appear. Okay. Over here on the left, we have the toolbox, and these are all the tools that you can use to uh, build or develop your SSIS package. Um, you can, again, if this is gone, you can click on this toolbox button, or you can go to view, and you can see right here you have toolbox. Okay. This area right here is your uh, design pane. Uh, this is where, if you're Picasso, you do all of your artwork. Um, and this is where you design everything. Okay. So, if we look at a couple of things right here, um, we have a for loop container. I'll just drag this out really quick. Uh, for loop container is um, it's like a loop in uh, C sharp or any other programming language. And what you can do is if you have a set number of times that you want to loop over, let's say, a, a set of files in the folder, you could do that here. So you could initiate an expression. Let's say we had a variable at my file. And then 
well, the variable is not declared. Um, but so let's say we set it to uh, at my file equals. Sorry, I'm going to do evaluate expression. It's going to be uh, less or greater than five. And then we can set this variable to at my file equals my file plus one. So every time, um, let's say you were looking into a folder, this file or this variable would loop until every time, so one time, then it will add another variable one time, and then finally until it reaches five, then it will go ahead and it will exit um, the loop. I haven't really used that much. Um, so that is the for loop container. All right, and we have a for each loop container. And this is uh, pretty much to say you want to loop over a set of records in uh, a database. Uh, you want to loop over a set of files um, in a folder. Uh, you can configure this. Um, here you can give it a name or a description. And here we have uh, the for each loop editor. And this is where you can do ado.net. You can do a for each item. Um, you can loop over variables. Um, so basically what you would do is you would pick a folder and once you pick a folder, uh, let's say we did c.test or test folder, um, we could look for files that had an extension of dot anything or you could do dot xls for like an X, uh, excel file. You may have a dat file or any other file that you want to look, loop, uh, look for. Uh, and then here you have how you're going to retrieve that file name. So you could have the fully qualified name, which would be like C colon backslash blah, blah, blah. Or you can just do name only, which would only return the name of the file. Or you can do name and extension which would be test.xls, for instance. 